Hi, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 9.7, Graph and Analyze Relationships. The essential question for this lesson is, how can you write and graph ordered pairs on a coordinate grid using two numerical patterns? Now, go ahead and open up your GoMath workbooks to lesson 9.7, found on page 195, and let's get started. Now, let's take a look at question number two together. It says to graph and label the related number pairs as ordered pairs. So that's step one. Then it says, then complete and use the rule to find the unknown term. Well, for question two, the rule says this. Multiply the number of quarts by blank. So we're going to have to complete the rule to find the number of cups that measure the same amount. So when I look at my table right here, what I notice is this. The numbers running across in that first row represent the number of quarts. So I have one, two, three, four, five quarts. And then the number running across in the second row of numbers represents the number of cups. So I have four, eight, twelve, and sixteen. Now remember, the direction said graph and label the related number pairs as ordered pairs. So my first step is going to be this. I'm going to write the numbered pairs in our table as ordered pairs. And I want you guys to go ahead and take that step with me. So I'm going to look at our first set of number pairs, which are 1 and 4. So what that tells me is, for one quart, there are four cups. So I'm going to go ahead and write that first set as 1, 4, and that'll be my first ordered pair. So we have 1, 4. Now my second set of numbers is 2 and 8 because in two quarts there are four cups. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to write down 2, 8 as our next ordered pair. Now we see a 3 and a 12 and what that tells us is in three quarts there are 12 cups. So we're going to go ahead and write down 3, 12 as our next ordered pair. Now we also have 4 and 16 and that tells us in four quarts there are 16 cups. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 4, 16 now, for our last order pair, they tell us that there are five quarts, but our job is going to be to find the unknown term. So what I'm going to do right now is this. I'm going to write down my five as my x-coordinate, and then I'm going to put a question mark here because we don't know that term yet. Now, step number two is going to be this. We're now going to graph the ordered pairs. So I'm going to come over to our graph over here, our coordinate grid, and we're going to go ahead and now graph the ordered pairs that we've written down. Now, my first ordered pair was 1, 4. So from the origin, I'm going to come over 1, and I'm going to go up 4, and we're going to graph that first ordered pair. So over 1 on the x, and then up 4 on the y, and we'll graph that first ordered pair right there. Now, our next ordered pair is 2, 8. So that means from the origin, we're going to move over 1, 2, and then we're going to come up 4, 8, and we're going to graph that ordered pair right there. So over 2 on the x, and up 8 on the y, and we'll graph our next ordered pair right here. So we now have 2, 8. Our next ordered pair is 3, 12. So that means on the x-axis from the origin, we're going to move over 1, 2, 3, and we're going to move up 4, 8, and then 12, and we're going to graph that point right there. So we'll go ahead and come over 3 on the x, up, on the, up 12 on the y, and graph our next ordered pair. Now our next ordered pair is 4, 16. So that means from the origin, we're going to move over 1, 2, 3, 4, and now we're going to move up 4, 8, 12, and then 16, and we'll graph our point right here. So that's over 4 on the x and up 16 on the y, and we'll go ahead and graph our point right here. Now as our next step, we now need to connect the points, so the points we've just plotted here, here, here and here, we're now going to connect those points with a line from the origin. So starting from the origin, we're now going to draw a line between our points. So I want you to go ahead and take that next step with me as well. So from the origin, we're now going to draw a line, and we're just going to draw that line through the points that we have already plotted. So there's our line now collecting, connecting our points. Now our next step is going to be this. We now need to identify the possible rule between quarts and cups. So let's take a look at the numbers given. In the first set of numbers right here, we have 1 and 4. Well, what I know is this. I'm going from a smaller number to a larger number, so I'm going to think about multiplication. And what I know is this. I know that 1 times 4 would give me 4. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down. Now remember, 
If it works for the first one, we have to test it and make sure that it works for the others as well. So once again, I know that 1 times 4 is going to give me 4. So let's try it with our second set of numbers here. Does 2 times 4 give us 8? And what we know is, yes, 2 times 4 gives us 8. Now let's look at the next set of numbers. We have a 3 and a 12. Does 3 times 4 give us 12? And once again, we know that 3 times 4 is going to give us 12. Now let's try it for the last set of numbers here. Does 4 times 4 give us 16? And we know that 4 times 4 does give us 16. So what I know is this. My rule is going to be this. Multiply the number of quarts by 4. So I'm going to go ahead and write the 4 down. Multiply by 4 to find the number of cups that measure the same amount. So to find that unknown term, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to multiply 5 times 4, and I know that 5 times 4 is going to give me 20. So that last ordered pair now becomes 5, 20. So what I'm going to do next is this. I'm going to go ahead and graph that ordered pair. So from the origin, what I would do is I'm going to move over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I'm going to move up 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. So let's go ahead and graph that last ordered pair. So once again, we're going to move over on the x, 5, and then we're going to move up 20, and we're going to graph our point right here. Now my last step is to go ahead and connect that with our line as well. So I'm going to go ahead and extend our line, and when I do that, what I notice is that makes sense because our point falls within our line that we had already drawn. So, so we have now graphed and labeled the related number pairs as ordered pairs, and we also completed and used our rule to find the unknown term. Now let's take a look at question number three together. It's our real world problem solving question and number three says, how can you use the graph from exercise two and listen, here's my graph from exercise two and you have yours in front of you as well, to find how many cups are in nine quarts. So our focus here is gonna be this. We have to figure out how many cups are gonna be in nine quarts. And a strategy that I can use is this. I could extend the line on our graph and what that means is we can make our graph longer. So I want you guys to go ahead and take your pencil and I want you guys to go ahead and begin to extend your graph. So from where we left off right here, I'm going to go ahead and begin to extend my graph just like that. And I want you to do the same. Now that we've extended our graph, here's our next step. Now we're going to locate 9 on the x-axis because remember we're talking about how many cups are in 9 quarts. So from the origin we're going to move over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then from the 9, we're going to draw a vertical line up to the line that we've already graphed right here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and draw a dotted line here from our 9 up to the line that's already been graphed. So here we go. So right here, we're going to go ahead and draw that line, the vertical line up, until it hits the line that we've already graphed and it hits our line right here and I'm going to go ahead and graph that point. Now from that point I'm going to draw now a horizontal line over to the y-axis. So I'm going to go ahead and now draw that horizontal line. So from our point, here we go, drawing the horizontal line over. And when I do that, I know that it hits the y-axis at 36. So what that tells me is there are 36 cups in 9 quarts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down to our table and I've extended our table to have the 9 and I know once again that in 9 quarts there are going to be 36 cups. So I'm going to go ahead and write our 36 down here and that's going to be the missing term. And I know that that also makes sense because when I multiply 9 times 4, which was our rule, I know that 9 times 4 is going to give us 36. So what we've done is once again we extended our line right here we found 9 on the x-axis. We drew a vertical line up from the 9 until we hit the line we'd already graphed. We graphed the point right there and then from that point we drew a horizontal line across to the y-axis which led us to our answer of 36. So once again what I know is this. In 9 quarts there are 36 cups. So I'm going to go ahead and write down 36 cups are in 9 quarts and I want you to add that in as well. 
and we have now found the answer to our question right here. Now your homework for tonight will be to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your Go Math workbook on page 196. Don't forget, somewhere on your homework page we want you to assess yourself. Do you feel like you're number one a novice, number two an apprentice, number three a practitioner, or number four an expert? Don't forget, your homework for tonight will be to complete question number one and question number two, as well as numbers three through six found in your Go Math workbook on page 196. We hope you have a great evening and look forward to seeing you at school tomorrow.